Hi and welcome to Mr Graham's GCSEP lesson on dye. Just a couple of things before we get started. First off, make sure you've got a pen and a piece of paper handy so that you can make notes on all the relevant information and terminology being used throughout the presentation. This will be vital when it comes to discussing and talking about it within lesson time. As well as this, please feel free at any time to either press pause or rewind if you don't fully understand what's being said or being taught within the presentation. Most of all, enjoy learning about diet within the next two or three minutes. Within today's lesson on diet, you will gain a knowledge and understanding of the seven factors that contribute to a balanced diet. You will also be able to categorise these foods into both micro and macronutrients. Most of you as well by the end should be able to explain the terms carbo loading, blood shunting and based on metabolic rate. Don't be afraid by some of the terminology being introduced to you within the learning objectives as this will become a lot clearer as we go through the presentation. So what is diet? Diet is essentially the normal food we eat on a daily basis. However, different people have different diet requirements and this will become a lot clearer as we go through the presentation and you will understand the seven factors that contribute to a balanced diet. On the slide in front of you, you will notice that I have identified two types of specific diet. These are vegans and vegetarians. Moving on, if you notice, you'll see the terms sedentary versus active. These are two types of lifestyles that people might lead, which will require different amounts of calorie intake. So, if you take a sedentary person, this is a person that has very little or no physical activity within their lives, these should in essence require less calories during a day than an active person, somebody who takes part in some sort of regular physical activity, whether it's walking, running, sprinting or weight training, those types of people should require more calories throughout the day. This is because their bodies are using the food that they are taking in to burn off as energy so they can work throughout the day. However, this is not always the case, hence why you get obese people or overweight people. One final thing, don't get diet confused with being on a diet, a term normally used by people to describe wanting to lose weight. By now you should have a better knowledge and understanding of what the term diet means. So, within this slide, we're going to be focused on learning objective one, which was looking at the seven factors that contribute to a balanced diet. As well as this, we're going to be focusing on learning objective two, which was categorizing these seven factors into either micro or macronutrients. First off, we have the macronutrients. These are the larger food groups that we need to intake on a daily basis, and these include carbohydrates, fats, and proteins. As well as this, we have the micronutrients. These are the smaller food groups that we need to intake on a daily basis, and these include vitamins and minerals. As well as understanding these key factors, it is also really important to understand the terms fibre and water and the importance that these have on having a balanced diet. So, within the next four slides, we're going to be taking a more in-depth look into what the seven factors mean in relation to diet. So please make sure you've got a pen and a piece of paper handy so that you make notes on the key terminology and information being provided. This will be vital when it comes to discussing it within lesson time. By now you should have gained a good knowledge and understanding of the seven food groups that contribute to a healthy balanced diet. So within this slide we're going to focus on learning objective three which is being able to explain the three terms that are identified. First off we have basal metabolic rate. This is the amount of energy expended daily whilst at rest in the form of calories and it can vary from individual to individual depending on their body size, body composition, gender, age 
and health. Next we have carb overloading. This is a strategy used by endurance athletes such as marathon runners to maximise the storage of glycogen in the muscles. Take for example more Farah. In the build up to a big race, usually 3-4 to four days prior, he will increase the amount of carbohydrates that he's intaking within his diet. This can then be stored in the liver as glycogen and when it comes to race day, it can be converted into glucose so that it can run for harder and for longer periods. Lastly, we have blood shunting. This is the diversion of blood from one area of the body to another area in response to the physiological demands placed on the body. When we start exercising, the work and muscles require more oxygen so that they can work for harder and for longer. However, there are other areas of the body, like the stomach, that do not require this blood as much. So therefore, it is redirected away from the stomach to the work and muscles so that they have the oxygen that is required to be able to work for long periods without getting tired. Finally, in preparation for next lesson, what I want you to do is consider what type of diet each of these athletes would need and also be able to state why they require this type of diet. Good luck.